morning to all of you. So we had a lot of classes, a lot of studies, a lot of surgical learning. Let's do something different today. No, we are not going to have any fun. Rather, we are going to have a test today. So before we begin, let me make it simple for you. The test for today is only on the technique of opening anterior and posterior pouches during vaginal hysterectomy. I personally believe that in the case of vaginal hysterectomy, if you have opened the pouch of Douglas as well as the anterior pouch or UV fold safely, there is nothing left to be done. Just three clamps here and three clamps there and the hysterectomy is done. So the trick is, the challenge is to open how safely you can open the anterior pouch as well as the posterior pouch. There is where people get scared, they get stuck and they tend to have complications. So through various stages of surgery, I'll ask you different questions. What you have to do is you have to pause there and assess yourself. Then you proceed to get the answer. So, are you ready? Let's do it. It's a case of third degree uterovaginal prolapse and we are starting the surgery. The first question for you is, what is this infiltration? Though, every video I explain that what we inject, still many of you guys will be posting comments, what is this infiltration, what is that infiltration? So tell me who knows it. I hope you have already answered either in your mind or in the comment box below. Yes, it is diluted adrenaline. And how do we use it? We take 1 ml or 1 ampule of adrenaline, mix it with 200 milliliters of normal saline and then inject it. For entire surgery, up to 100 to 120 ml of this diluted solution can be used. When we start, we usually use 50 to 60 ml of it. That's it. Let's move on to the next question. Now is the time to give the first transverse incision. And what should be the site of first transverse incision? So, what is the answer? The answer is, actually it is at the cervico-vaginal junction. But in most of the cases of prolapse, like this one, it is not easy to delineate the rugosities and thus the cervico-vaginal junction. So, we give an incision around 1.5 cm above the os. To make this incision, we can either use cautery or we can use knife also. There are different advantages and disadvantages of using any of those. Usually, cautery will prevent hemorrhage. It will cause less bleeding. While if you are using knife, it will give you a nice plane of delineation and it will show tissues very separately, very beautifully. In this particular case, we chose to use knife because the tissues were extremely fragile and thin. So we thought the idea was that if we use cautery, the chances of dissipation of energy and causing heat damage or electrical damage to the surrounding tissue was higher. So you have to choose the risk and benefit from patient to patient. And we chose to have little more breathing than to have less thermal burn to the surrounding structures which brings us to my third question what are the various methods of hemostasis you can use to minimize bleeding during a vaginal surgery yes you are right first one is the liberal use of adrenaline really works very well and the second one is Use of cautery will help to decrease the bleeding. Cautery you can use for cutting also. And as soon as you see the bleeding, try to coagulate it with cautery so the vessel is sealed and it will decrease further bleeding from that particular point. Now 
Now question number four. After giving the incision, when the tissues open up, at what plane you should start your dissection? Option number one is between the layer of vagina and the bladder or what we call as the bubble of safety. Option number two is should you start dissecting between this bladder or bubble of safety and the cervix? So what is the right answer? Yes. Always remember when we are starting the surgery, if we have to approach the UV fold or the anterior pouch, this is the plane of dissection, the bubble of safety or the bladder and the cervix. If you go into the option number one, that is between the vagina and the bladder. That is the plane which we have to use for cystocele repair to reflect the walls of vagina. I hope it is clear to all of you. Question number four. Suppose it's your bad day and the bladder gets injured. How do you identify it? So, for easy identification sake, one day prior to surgery, in our practice, we give pyridium to the patient. Two tablets of pyridium the night prior to the surgery so that the urine becomes orange and as soon as you open the bladder by mistake, by your bad luck, an orange color of fluid will pour outside. That is the identification. Now suppose it was your bad day and bladder injury happened. Urine, which is orange in color, has already leaked out and you can see that there is a rent in the bubble up from where the urine is leaking. What do you do? Rule number one is don't panic. Stop the procedure there. You have to repair it now and the question now is whether you should finish your surgery then repair it or you should wait now first repair it and then go ahead with the rest of the surgery many books mention it and many people say that first finish your surgery and then go for the bladder repair but my thought process is a little different what i advise that if you have identified the injury first repair it it will have many advantages. One is the psychological advantage because if you leave it open and start finishing other parts of the surgery, always this thing will remain in your mind that, oh, bladder is injured, bladder is injured. Once see this and close it, then your mind will be little free that you have repaired it and then you can go ahead and finish the remaining surgery. The other thing is, if you leave it open, the urine continuously will be leaking from there and your area will not be as clear all the time if some fluid is sleeping because ureters are producing urine in the bladder. If it keeps on sleeping, it will hinder your other surgical procedures and solve it too. So my advice is first repair the injury and then go ahead and finish your case. For repairing the bladder, you do not have to call any urologist. You can do it yourself. Bladder, trust me, is a very forgiving organ. It will heal very well. So you have to have a suture. Vitral is okay. Even PDS is fine. A suture number should be 3O. If it is not there, it's okay to use 2O vitral also. Bladder rent should be repaired in two layers preferably. And the sutures, what you are taking, can be either continuous, but do not lock those, or it can be even interrupted suture. So in first layer, try to take mucosa of the bladder and also the muscularis. And the second overlaying layer is to approximate the serosa. At the end of the surgery, check it with methylene glue. There, it should be a watertight compartment. There should not be any leaking. And last but not the least in these women keep catheter for at least two to three weeks depending on the size of the rent so that the drainage is continuous and bladder gets adequate rest to heal
time for next question question number seven what is the technique of opening the pouch of diapers i hope 100 times i have told you the technique is simple the technique is thin and neck and i use cocker forceps to hold or to tent the posterior vaginal wall now if you are thinking that what should be the distance the distance where the cocker forceps holds the posterior vaginal wall is double the entire distance so entire distance if you have kept 1.5 cm here it should be 3 cm and if you nick it like this you can see the peritoneum opening you can inspect that it has pouch of douglas inside you can see the posterior wall of uterus also and you have any doubt as kavita had it here because she could not see it because of her standing position you can even feel for the smoothness of the posterior wall of the uterus If the day is going really bad, one more complication can happen. And what is that? While opening the pouch of Douglas, there can be bubble injury. And how do you identify it? There will be leakage of some fluid or some fecal material which will be smelling the way it smells. So there, I do not advise that you start repairing it on your own. At this stage, if you injure bubble at the time of opening POD, later during rectocyte, you can repair it yourself because that is the extra peritoneal part of the bubble. There is no harm in repairing it yourself. But at the time of opening the pouch of Douglas, if by chance bubble injury happens, don't hesitate. You have to call a surgeon there. And by the time you get the surgeon in OT, if you feel you can finish the hysterectomy but if you are feeling very low you can tell one of your colleagues or assistant to finish the case for you that's the right way to go about it as i was telling you earlier the tissues of this lady were so fragile that to open the pouch of douglas we did not even need to cut it just with the fingers only when we were trying to bring the fundus in front and look for the uv fold it gave way and opened on its own. So you have to be very, very careful and very, very gentle in cases like this. Last question. Is there a risk of ureteric injury during vaginal hysterectomy for prolapse? Usually not. But in cases of third degree UV prolapse and precedentia, Sometimes the ureter gets pulled down because of the prolapse and are around 1 to 1.5 centimeters away from the internal os where we are clamping the uterine arteries. So yes, you have to keep that in your mind. Now this is one beautiful picture to explain that how easily you can prevent the ureteric injury even if they are close to the operating field. The first star is for the retractor, which is retracting the bladder upwards. If you pull it nicely upwards, the ureter tend to go up and laterally. The other star is for traction of the cervix. If you nicely give traction to the cervix and simultaneously retract the bladder carefully, you are pushing the ureters far away from the operating field. So. Isn't it a simple trick to do? You must do it every time you are doing any vaginal hysterectomy. So that's it for today. Let me know your experience with this quiz. And if you want to have more such sessions with different surgical aspects in urogynecology, I'll be waiting. Oh, wait, where are you going? Have you? Written in the comment box below, how much did you get today? Let me know.